Hey everybody, this is our second part video on a question on how Jedi can get more involved with the world through our path and philosophy. Hopefully this addresses the question of Jedi and action. For me, Jedi focus on world betterment through self-betterment. It's through your training and through your studies that you better yourself and steady yourself. You create a solid foundation which can then spread outward. The question a lot of people have though is how does that radiate outwards and what can you do when you feel comfortable to start doing things out in the world? What I recommend for this is the five goals of the Jedi. It's a pretty solid foundation which discusses this very thing. The first goal, train diligently. This is important. This is about solidifying your foundation. In order to help people you must be in a position to help people. If you want to accomplish something you must be capable of accomplishing that. And that comes across in many different fields. If you're looking to help someone who's financially struggling, well if you're financially struggling, you're not going to be able to do much in regards to that. Of course that's not the only way you can help someone, but the point is that you want to be in a position that you are capable of helping. You want to be capable of fulfilling the five goals of the Jedi, so train diligently. Take care of yourself first, Jedi. Make sure that you are ready to slay the dragon before you get out there. You don't want to go too soon. You'll get eaten. It's not pretty. It just doesn't work out. The second goal in the five goals of the Jedi is to provide support. Providing support is simply being that pillar that we have discussed before. Sometimes you might be supporting physically. Sometimes it might be emotionally or spiritually or intellectually. There's a lot of different ways that your support might be required. The main idea here is that you are not always going to be the spotlight hero. The story is not always going to be about you, and it's important that you support those who are in that position, the people who are already in leadership roles. Consider a situation where an EMT or paramedic is on a scene. You don't want to get in their way, but you can support them in various ways. It's not always about being the leader and always about slaying that dragon. Sometimes you need to be the squire. Sometimes you need to just support the person who is fighting that fight. And that can be very valuable. There's many ways you can accomplish this. You can just be there for a friend or family member that might just need some emotional support or just some moral support. The main thing here is to provide that support which is less tangible. It's not really monetary, it's more about what you can do as a person to kind of support those around you and encourage the change that you would like to see in the world. The third goal is to render aid. Now this is a bit different because now we are talking about the tangible and materialistic things. Rendering aid can take a lot of forms. For example, fundraising. Like when I'm fundraising for the Starlight Children's Foundation through a Spartan race. You can click the link and donate. This provides monetary compensation for an organization that's already doing things. We can say that we're supporting them, but what we're doing is providing a materialistic aid for them to continue their mission forward. There are many ways to render aid, and obviously that can vary on how you accomplish that. Maybe you invest your time, energy for a bake sale to raise money for a local arts program. Maybe you donate a car you no longer need to the local community center so they can use it to pick up kids from school. This can also take forms in providing food and much needed supplies. Rendering aid is all about investing your time, energy, and monetary resources and or supplies to an organization or to a cause that is necessary. Number four is defend those in need. Now hang on a second, this one can be a little confusing. While physical defense might be called for, hopefully it never is. And that does apply to this, so you should be capable of fulfilling it if necessary. But the goal of the Jedi is never to have a violent or physical confrontation. Instead, what we're really talking about here is being a voice for the voiceless. Again, this can take a lot of different forms. This can just be sticking up for someone or letting someone know that they do have a voice and how to use it. 
This can be something like sticking up for someone who's being bullied in school. This also can be something that relates to things that really don't have voices, the environment and animals. If you're looking to get involved in ways that you can be a voice for the voiceless, that you can defend those in need, there are different groups that you can join that are already out there kind of fighting that fight. For example, you can join and help Charity Water, which is out there defending people who need clean water in places that a lot of people haven't even heard of. Or you can join a group like Wolf Sanctuary, which is defending wolves in the Colorado area, providing them a safe haven. You can join groups like this and be a part of that cause, defending those in need, becoming a voice for the voiceless. This also will help tie in to your other goals. For example, you can defend lost or abandoned animals by joining an animal shelter. And in return, you can render aid by giving your time, energy, and resources to cleaning the cages and feeding the animals. And providing support for those who are running it, letting them know that people still care and they do have help to keep it running. Like all things in the Jedi, our philosophy always kind of ties together. It's multifaceted and it works to support each other so our path is complete. There's one more goal in the Jedi Path, and that is to discover the Force. Often written as study the Force. Now, regardless of what your thoughts are on the Force, I want to just strip away everything. If we strip away everything from the Force, the mysticism, the religious concepts, the idea of Force powers, of fate, if we just take everything away, what we're left with is an idea of interconnectedness that we are all connected together, that we are bound to a singular aspect, life. We are here on this world, on this planet, and we are all trying to do the best we can. Life is just seeking to survive. Now the hows and the whys, now that becomes a very personal thing. And it does need to be explored because it will play into those other goals. The way you define the force and how you view it will often affect the causes that you want to take part in. It'll provide you answers on a smaller level as you seek those bigger answers of how and why and what the Force is. Does it have powers? What does it mean in regards to fate? Free will? Is it a godhead? Those are answers you're going to have to discover for yourself. It's important to know that no one can give you those answers. These are things that you're going to have to dig into and find for yourselves. This goal is completely for you. So it is gonna be on you on how you really dig into it and what answers you come to. And those answers are for you. They don't need to be the same and they don't need to be accepted by another Jedi. And they will play into the other goals. So it's something to have and it is an important aspect of the Jedi path. Hopefully this video has at least offered some ways that you can apply Jedi philosophy in your everyday life. You know where the buttons are, you can click like, subscribe, whatever. Thank you for watching, and the Force be with you.